ang inaming dalangit, Panginoon. Maghari kayo sa buhay namin, Panginoon. Mangyari, Panginoon, lahat ng nais mo sa bawat isa sa amin. Pangunahan kami ng Espiritu mo, Lord, sa lahat ng ginagawa namin sa araw-araw, Panginoon. change 
will declare this. This is your church, God build it. She Yes, hallelujah, Lord. We praise you and we thank you. God, thank you for gathering all of us here together to worship and to be filled by your Spirit. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa pagkatunay nga po na ang inyong salita ay hindi nagbabago noon, ngayon, at magpakailanman. Yes, Lord, maybe there are times or there are shakings that is happening around us. Maybe sa workplace, sa business, sa family, or sa finances, or maybe in our nations. But one thing is for sure, Lord, na Ikaw yung aming angkla, na kung saan, kailanman hindi matitinag, hindi magigiba, because You are our firm foundation. Yes, Jesus, You are the cornerstone of our faith. Ikaw ay sa amin, at kami naman ay sa inyo, because we belong to You, God. Lord, As you have promised, you will never leave us nor forsake us. That's why we are secured by your love. Thank you, Father, because you are our hiding place. You are our safe refuge. And in your hands, Lord, we are secured. Kaya naman po, Panginoon, kaming lahat na naririto ngayon, tulungan niyo po kami na ang aming pananampalataya ay mas lalong lumalim. Mas lalong tumibay sa inyo, Panginoon. Kaya kahit anumang pagdaanan namin, ay hindi kami bibitiw. Lord, gamitin niyo rin po kami ang bawat isa na naririto ngayon na maging asin at ilaw upang ang makita ng bawat taong nakapaligid sa amin ay ikaw at hindi kami. Lord, as individual, as a family, as a church, lead us as we advance your kingdom. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you because you are always on our side. We thank you for your unending love and grace. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Sige po, palakpakan natin ng ating Panginoon. Yan. Good morning, good morning, good morning everyone. Bago po kayo umupo, pwede niyo po bang ngitian ang inyong mga katabi at kaway-kaway dyan. Alright, good morning po. Yan, tapos pwede na po kayo makaupo. Ayun. Thank you everyone. I'm so glad to see you here na nandito tayo. Almost mapupuno na po tayo. No? So let us continue to pray na mapuno itong ating worship service. So I am John Elpo, one of the Victory Group leaders here in Victory, Novaliches. And Victory, okay, we, are, we have several locations in Metro Manila and we exist in to honor God and make disciples. Ngayon pong umagang ito, meron lang po tayong dalawang announcement. The first one is... Move Up Senior High School Graduate Celebration. So, lahat po ng mga senior high school na graduate na po, we are inviting you to sell and celebrate with you po as we send you when as you enter the exciting life, no, yung talagang ma, masayang buhay ng college life. No? This coming July 9, 2022, Saturday po, from 10 a.m. to 12, noon dito po sa Cinema 8, ay eh, iniimbitahan po namin lahat ng senior high school graduate. So, para sa mga parents po, if you have a child na senior graduate, high school graduate na, please ask them to join by signing up sa QR code or kung man, nandito po kayo, you can also sign up po sa ating admin booth. So, again po, July 9, senior high school graduates celebration. Then, number two po, second announcement po natin 
is yung ating mission update sa Panama. We're so excited po na to announce you to announce to you guys and to share with you paano kumikilos si God sa pagmumuo sa iba't ibang nations and paano niya binubuksan yung mga pintuan ng bansang ito to share the gospel, no? And let's hear the testimony po dito sa video mula sa ating team missionary sa Panama po. When God calls us to reach every nation with the gospel, He's the one who makes a way for His kingdom to continually advance in the nations. Let's hear about His faithfulness and the doors that are opening to us in the nation of Panama. My name is Erico Rico Fort. I am a church planter here in every nation, Panama. We moved here August 1, 2021, and I just can't believe we are now on our 11th month. We felt that the Lord was calling us here. Why? Because Panama is strategically located in the center. We felt that it was going to be a bridge to reach out to the rest of Central America. Panama literally means abundance of fish. We're planting a church in a place where there's an abundance of fish. And the Lord has called us to be fishers of men. So we believe that this is the starting point to be able to settle here in this great nation. We're just so thankful for what the Lord has done that every nation Panama has been approved by the government. That means we can now conduct worship services. We can now do campus ministry officially as every nation Panama. And we're just so thankful because campus ministry has been ongoing. The second month that we landed, there's been campus ministry already. In fact, today, currently here, we are reaching out to two campuses. Uh, the University of Panama currently has about 90,000 students. UTP has 25,000 students. These two campuses, we've been reaching out to about 60 students. We did some online English groups and this guy, his name is Eduardo. We reached out to him, one of the team members. They've done one-to-one -one with him. But what we're most excited about is that he started inviting his sister to church. He did not just invite his sister, he invited his friend. And she's also going through one-to-one. -one. We're just so grateful to see lives being changed. God touching students, transforming lives. Because God has called us not just to reach one nation, but to reach every nation. On behalf of Every Nation Panama, all the campus missionaries here, we just want to thank everyone for praying for us, for supporting us. It means a lot. So, Gloria a Dios, gracias a todos. We're believing for God's mighty work to continue in this great nation. Thank you, and God bless you all. We're excited how these open doors for our team in Panama will help us fulfill God's mission to make disciples of all nations. Thank you for believing in, praying for, and supporting our missionaries. You play a big part in seeing God's plans come to pass. Together, let's continue to reach every campus and every nation. Awesome. Praise God, no? We hope and pray for more, more open doors sa iba't ibang bansa, katulad nung sa Panama, no? And thank you, everyone, for praying, for supporting our missionaries. And let's hope and pray na mas marami pang bansa ang mabuksan para sa at salita ng Panginoon. Now, for our tithes and offering, let me exhort you sa 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13 to 14. Before I read po ito, just to give you a background po, no? So, si Elijah, he was asked by the Lord to come to a place, yung Zafarat. Then, namet niya po yung widow na kung saan, syempre, uhaw na uhaw na si Elijah. Then, he asked for food for, sa widow na yun. And that widow answered, Naku, yan, itong kahoy na uh, ginagather namin today, it is uh, gagamitin namin for our last meal and mamamatay na kami. But Elijah said sa verse 13, sabi niya, Do not fear, go and do as you have said. But first, make a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Dito po sa passage na to, three things po yung natutunan ko po. No? Number one, we are facing different situations in our life. There are times meron, 
sakto, minsan kulang. Kaya dumadating yung point na papasa na all ka na lang, di ba? Number two, na reality, when we give our tithes and offering, it is not just an act of worship, but it is also a call to obedient, to obey, for obedience. No? Number three, when we obey, ito po yung promise, God, when we obey God, trusting Him more than what is in our hand, ano man yung nasa kami natin, God not just feel our needs, but even provide the things that we do not expect. So as we return our tithes and offering, let us lift up everything to God, step out in faith with thanksgiving, and allow God to move in every area of our lives. So let's pray po. God, thank you. Because first, ikaw po yung source ng lahat ng meron kami. Thank you rin, Lord, because you have given us the ability to work, to earn, so that itong aming kinikita or itong resources na meron kami ay may balik namin sa inyo ng buong puso, buong lakas, buong isip, at buong kaluluwa. We thank you, Lord, because lahat ng ito, Panginoon, ay para sa inyo. And we know that you know what is in our heart, you know what is in our mind, and you will, we also believe that you will answer our prayers in your right time, in your right way, in your right will, Lord. We thank you and we honor you in our tithes and offering. In Jesus' name, amen. There are several ways for us to give our tithes and offering. The first one, we can, ha- uh, we can choose from GCash, PayMaya, bank transfer, or direct deposit to our union bank. Second, ang office po natin, bukas siya every Saturday and Sunday so that we can drop our tithes and offering envelope po dun sa drop box. And le- last po, may ter- terminal po tayo sa labas na pwede natin itap yung ating debit and credit card. Again po, we would like to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. God bless you. Every year as a church, we pray and fast at the start of the year and mid-year because we want to know God more, go deeper in the Word, and be in faith for what He will do in and through us. When we fast, we declare that we want God more than food by denying ourselves for a time. Remember, pray about the kind of fast you will undertake and commit to it ahead of time. Do not decide on a day-to-day basis. Ask God for grace. Together, let's know God more and hear from Him during our prayer and fasting. All right, good uh, morning, everyone. Are you excited for our mid-year prayer and fasting? Nagutom na, no? Nagutom na, ayan, no? All right, so uh, if you're first time here, it's been our spiritual discipline. It has been our practice every year. Beginning of the year, we com- uh, dedicate a five days prayer and fasting, and every mid year, a three days prayer and fasting for, for us as a congregation or as a movement. All right, boom, victory puto, uh, Philippines, and even every nation. All right, so uh, it is our heart to continually humble ourselves for our God, seek His face, and allow God to continually lead us as a movement, uh, as a church, so that uh, we will not just know His will, but we will be able, uh, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we'll be able to accomplish what He would want us to accomplish, what He would want us to do. So that's our heart. All right, so I hope that uh, you are excited for this. Join us July 6, 7, 8. All right, every night dito po sa Cinema 8, we will be gathering together on, la- on site, uh, physically, and uh, we will be uh, praying together as a church family. So join us 7, seven o'clock in the evening. All right, and uh, with that then, uh, if you do understand, meron po tayong Nova Evening Prayer na Shino Show online every day, every week, Monday to Friday. Uh, with this, we are doing it away after ng prayer, five, three days mid-year prayer and fasting natin. And uh, after ng mid-year prayer and fasting, every uh, first and third Thursdays, we'll be having our uh, prayer meeting on site. Okay? We will replace our online uh, devotional okay, with a prayer meeting on site here at Cinema 8 every first and third Thursdays of the month because we do understand uh, be- we're better together, all right? And uh, we do understand that uh, prayer meetings should also be done corporately, congregationally, physically, with impartation. So, uh, marami naman po tayo mga uh, resources online sa Victory lang po, no? Meron tayong morning worship and prayer. So, you can also do that early in the morning while you're traveling, while you're uh, driving, um, 
or uh, if you would want to start your day uh, with this devotion, you can use our morning uh, prayer, worship, and prayer. All right, so makikita nyo po yan sa Victory Facebook page. All right, so uh, dahil July na po, okay, bukas po, Christmas na. Let me be the one to greet you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Lalabas na po si Jose Marichan, all right. But uh, definitely, uh, you have seen in the news, okay, last June 30, ang ating pong, uh, bagong Pangulo, the 17th President of the Philippines, Uh, President uh, Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. and our Vice President uh, Sarah Zimmerman Duterte na inaugurate na po sila and uh, they were uh, right now with our presiding President and Vice President together with their cabinet members and as they are uh, rallying people to pray for them and even as they long for a good governance, good leadership, ang heart po natin is to pray for them Uh, to allow God's presence to be upon them so that they will be able to bring the unity, peace, prosperity, and hope for the future, hope for our nation, all right, to come to pass. And uh, as well, this is our act of obedience towards our God. As, he, as Paul said in 1 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, all right, For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. I do believe this is good and pleasing to the Lord, and I do believe it will also benefit us as we pray for our newly elected officials. Whether you vote them or not, okay, this is our heart as a church. It is now our responsibility to pray for them. Amen? Amen. All right. So last week po, no, tinapos na po natin yung ating three-week series na As For Me and My House. Na-appreciate nyo po ba yung series na to? All right. How you have understand that uh, God values our families, that each family member or unit here, represented here, is loved by God, has a calling from God, and He has a purpose for you and me. Tama po ba? Amen po ba? All right, so I do believe that uh, God is calling each one of us to continually follow Him, have the fear of God in our lives so that we'll be able to fulfill His purpose sa buhay po natin. And we do understand, as, preach, as Kim preached last week, no, powerfully, all right, na hindi lamang po tayo nabubuhay in the now generation. All right, we are not just living for ourselves. We are also living for the next generation. So whatever we are doing right now, whatever we are deciding, whatever we are uh, really displaying as values in our family and even in our society, this is something that the values that we would want to transfer and impart to the next generation. So I hope each one of us would continually have the heart to really uh, disciple, raise the next generation of of leaders and, uh, and young people so that uh, this next generation will continually advance God's kingdom in their lives. Now we will be continuing our series, Stable and Sure. Uh, I'm sure you uh, are familiar with this. We had a uh, two-week series on this and we are continuing this, all right, because we do understand that God is continually building His church. All right, God is continually building each one of us. Pwede mo ba tapikin sa katabi mo, sabi mo sa katabi mo, thank you for being a church. All right? Thank you for being a church. Thank you for not just coming to the church. Thank you for being a church. Because we are His church. Tayo po, it's not Cinema 8, it's not uh, Robinson Savaliches. We are His church. Ang bawat isa po sa atin, it is God's church. So we do understand that God has a plan for His church. Mahalaga po ang family natin at mahalaga, mahalaga rin po ang ating spiritual family, ang ating church community. All right, And uh, we would want to continually know the will of God in our lives so that we will be able to align ourselves so that we can be the church that God wants us to be. Amen po ba? All right? Amen po ba? <laughs> Amen. All right, let me invite everyone to please stand up. I know you are excited for the Word of God. Yes. All right, so let me ask everyone, uh, including those who are watching with us online or worshiping with us online, can you please turn your Bible in, in the book of Ephesians? Ephesians chapter 2. We will be reading from Ephesians chapter 2. As for our reading today, we'll be reading from verse 19 down to verse 22. All right, so if you are there, kindly read along with me. 
sa mga nanonood or nagwo-worship online. Uh, hope you had your Bible with you. And uh, let's read the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to speak to us. It says here on verse 19, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we continually commit ourselves to you. We are your church. Come. Build it, Lord God. Come, build us. Come, have your way in us, Lord God. Build us together so that we will be a dwelling place for the God who owns everything, for the God who calls us for His purpose. And we know that the Holy Spirit is here, being our teacher, preacher, the one who will speak to your people. Thank you. Thank you for having your way in our lives. That we, Lord, you want us to come, not just to listen, but to apply whatever we are receiving from you. So, Lord, we honor you today. We just magnify you. Lord, remove all concerns, worries, anxieties amongst your people so that we'll be able to focus, Lord God, on you and hear and not be distracted. Lord, we receive your grace upon our lives right now. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone will say, Amen and Amen. You may now have your seat. Maraming salamat po. I'm... I'm glad that uh, our Cinema 8 is now being filled uh, with people, no? All right, and even, uh, totoo naman, kasi meron na rin tayong uh, announcement that uh, the government is allowing 100% capacity na rin for every worship venue. All right, and uh, tayo naman po, hindi tayo nag-force, no? Na kahit na for the past years natin, pre-pandemic, punong-puno po tayo rito, no? And we are max cap, no? Maximum capacity po natin is 450 but still, uh, we just want to continually rely on the work and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Naniniwala po ba kayo that God is building each one of us? All right, that God is moving in our lives. And I do believe as a church, no, there is this one thing that God would want to deal. There is this one thing that God would want to settle sa, sa puso po natin. All right, and I, ho, uh, and I believe, I believe na kapag nawala po ito sa puso natin, sa, 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 sa sistema po natin, we will continually be sensitive to God and we'll be able to see the foundation that God has built into our lives and that we will continually grow, mature, and be, be blessed in every way as uh, we continually walk with God. And I do believe this one word, prejudice. Ay, sabi nyo nga po, prejudice. All right? Ano po ba tong prejudice? Hindi, um, mukha lang pong sounds patis, no? Or ano, it's that. But this is, uh, this is something that... Uh, uh, Bombards not only the church, okay, communities, families, cities, and nations. All right, prejudice is part of humanity. All right, every single one of us are guilty, okay, or probably has engaged in bias, partisanship, partiality. Meron tayong mga dislikes, or we are hostile, or uh, meron tayong wall of defense to another person or to a group of people. Meron tayo mga prejudgment or mga preconceived notion about the, the person. Alright? So, kung titingnan mo yung katabi mo, okay? Pag titingnan mo pa na matagal yan, meron ka ng ginagawang prejudice dyan sa, sa mind mo. Alright? So, ginadjudge mo na yung katabi mo. Alright? So, alam nyo, everywhere in the world, okay? And even throughout the history, it has been the case. Alright? In Northern Ireland, there are tensions between Roman Catholics and the Protestants. All right, even in the Middle East, we all know from history, Israel and Arab nations. All right, there's that continuing conflict, not only uh, between Israel and Arab nations, but also amongst the Muslims. All right, there's a great divide between the Sunni and the Shia Islam. All right, so pati mga Muslims, nag-aaway-aaway din sila. All right, sa Africa, South Africa, there's this, this, there is what we call apartheid. All right, wherein this there is that discrimination among the, uh, the, the the black. All right, so uh, so U.S. man, meron ding civil war in the U.S. All right, that there is this uh, 
uh, civil war, right? And then recently, no, 20, this is 2021, uh, even late last year, the United Nations issued a report that detailed an alarming level of racially motivated violence and other hate incidents against Asians. So, pag Asia, Asian ka, alright, meron kang discrimination, you will uh, encounter or experience some um, uh, violence uh, over this cities and nations, all right? No, not to mention us as a, as, a, as a country or as a nation, as a Republic of the Philippines. We know uh, what divides us are uh, our regions, okay? Regionalism, okay? Ilonggo ako, Ilocano ka, Misaya man, or, uh, uh, taga Mindanao, all right? That, that brings great divide in us, all right? And some, somehow our, where we are, our location brings great pride in us, all right, na, na ipagmamalaki po natin, na ipagyayabang natin up to the point na nagka, hindi na natin alam, nagkakaroon na po lahat tayo ng conflict, nagkakaroon na tayo ng, 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 ng mga issues, okay, or great divide. All right, his election, sabi sa Christianity Today, nakita ko po to sa isang article, no? his election polarized the Philippines. Now evangelicals are repairing burned bridges. All right, why? Because really the past elections has really brought a great divide in us. All right, so... Nagkaroon po tayo ng mga kulay. All right, kahit within the church, no, nagkaroon po tayo ng kulay na instead na isa lamang po ang dinadala natin, marami pong hindi na umatend ng Bible study, marami na pong hindi umatend ng church, marami na pong tina, uh, itinakwil yung kanilang mga winantuan, yung mga dinidisciple nila, just for the sake of the election. All right, very sad po. And that's the reason why, sabi rito, evangelicals are repairing burned bridges. All right, and yan po yung book of Ephesians. And other letters that, Paul wrote, okay, uh, it is to deal with this matter, okay, it's exactly the same thing, because there's this world, cultural, national, and racial instability, okay, throughout history, malalaman po natin na uh, this is a problem, this is something that God has really dealt with, okay, kung titingnan po natin mga Romans, they will look down on anybody that is not a Roman, okay, pag hindi ka Roman, they will look down on you, the Greeks, Okay? They will look down on anybody that doesn't speak Greeks. All right? So sa mga Greeks, so, sa mga Griego, okay, tama ba Griego, Tagalog no? So sa kanila, dalawang klase lang tao, either Greeks or barbarians. Okay? They coined the term barbarians. If you don't speak Greek, okay, your language sounds like bar, 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 bar. All right? So kaya doon po nagsimula yung barbarians. Sa kanila po nang galing yung word na barbarian. To the, to the Jewish people, okay? If you are not a Jew, they will look down on you. So that the kind of division, this, this case was very, very common. And the answer to all of that, the answer to all of that was the gospel. It was the gospel. Amidst the animosity or strong hostility, the church was born. So inside the church, you will see Romans, you will see Greeks, you will see Jews, you will see male, female, masters, slaves, people of any gender, people of any age, people of any background. When Jesus came, he did not say, let's celebrate the different cultures. No, hindi po yun sinabi ni Jesus Christ. Ang sinabi ni Jesus Christ, let's remove, eliminate anything, everything that divides us, the boundaries that separates us, Jesus came to create a new community. Jesus came to create a new community, to bring a new community. And there's a reason why Jesus said to, the, to his disciples, I will build my church. And with that, with those words, here we are. We have different backgrounds, different ideologies, different culture, different status in life. We cannot be in this same room if, we, if it were not of Jesus. Tama po ba? Alright, pwede po ba natin palakpakan ng ating Panginoon? I saw this picture from the internet, no? We are all nuts, alright? So, nuts, di ba, is an idiomatic expression that we are all crazy. Di ba? We're, we're foolish. Alright? So, tingnan mo yung katabi mo, mukhang nuts ba yan? Ayan. Anong klaseng nut yan? Alright? <laughs> and true enough, di ba? That, that, that's what the Bible says. We are all sinners. You're all nuts. We're all crazy. We're all foolish, okay? Well, let me tell you, in the hands of our Lord, in the hands of our God, 
we are all a delightful, delicious, and diba? fruitcake. <laughs> Christmas na talaga, no? All right, thinking about Christmas. All right, so, sino rito mahilig kayo sa fruitcake? All right, so, ako, hindi man, wala yata mahilig sa fruitcake dito. Oh, hindi nyo alam yung fruitcake. <laughs> All right. So, from one nut to another, okay? Left to ourselves, we are not. Okay? We are nothing. But in the, in the Lord's hands, we can be beautiful, purposeful, living a meaningful life, giving glory and honor to our God. Again, let's give God praise for that. So, kaya sabi ni Paul dito, no? Sa book of Ephesians, yung binasa po nating scripture. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, the word of God, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. I think we already talked about this cornerstone. All right? And uh, just to give you a, uh, a review, that the cornerstone is the principal stone, okay, that uh, construction workers or uh, engineers would use. They are, you, pag sinabi po natin cornerstone, ano po ibig sabihin? It is the stone at the corner. Tama po ba, no? Profound, di ba? So, when you place that stone at the corner, okay, it serves as a guide to the workers in their course. Okay, so once the cornerstone was set, it became the, it became the basis of determining every measurement in the remaining construction. So everything was aligned to it. Lahat na aligned po dun sa cornerstone na yon. So if we say that Jesus is our cornerstone, and if He's the one building the church, Definitely, He is our standard, He is our measurement, and we have to align ourselves to Him since we are His building blocks. All right? So, if Jesus is the capstone, the foundation, if Jesus is the one binding every stone that holds the whole structure together, then it is our heart to align with Him. So, what happens when Jesus builds His church? Ano po ba nangyayari pag binibuild tayo ng ating Panginoon? Okay, you and I are, are His church. And there are things that are happening when He builds each one of us. Number one, we were rejected, now we are accepted. We were rejected, now we are accepted. Therefore, remember that at one time that you, Gentiles in the flesh, so this is us, okay, this is our past life. Okay, wala naman po mga Jew rito, no? Tama po ba? Okay, sa mga nanonood sa online, kung meron mga, mga Jews, no? good for you. Alright, but uh, dito sa church na to, wala pong Hudyo. Alright, and in, in that case, lahat po tayo Gentile. Alright, because at that time, dalawa lang po rin klase ng tao sa mga Hudyo, Jews and Gentile. So if we are not a Jew, if you are not born Jew, Jew uh, as a Jew, definitely we are a Gentile. Alright, and because we are not Jew, okay, you know what? Jewish people divided the world in, uh, using Judaism into uh, yeah, uh, Jews and Gentiles. And to the Jews, ito yung mga listahan po ng kanilang mga benefits and privileges. Okay, and let me share. Romans chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. Alam na alam po ni Paul to, no? Because he himself is a recipient of this. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, okay? Uh, the sonship of God, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Right? To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. So this lists all the advantages Jewish people has okay, uh, in their lives. The scriptures, the patriarchs, the temple worship, the sacrifices, the approach to God Himself, the priesthood, the promised Messiah. From a spiritual standpoint, kung titingnan natin, no, from a spiritual standpoint, they had it all. They have it all. Nasa kanila na ang lahat. Alright? So, tayo mga Gentiles, tayo mga Hintil, ano meron tayo? Ano meron tayo kung nasa kanila na lahat? So, logically, wala. Okay? At yun din po ang sinabi ni Paul. Sabi rito, no? They are without God in the world. Without God. Without covenant. Without promises. Without hope. Alright? Ito po daw yung condition ng mga Gentiles. Alright? So, 
Kung titingnan naman talaga natin, oh, uh, pag wala talaga tayong Diyos, iba, wala tayong pag-asa, wala tayong kalakasan, wala tayong kinabukasan. Iba? Tama po ba? All right? Uh, left without hope. Talagang kailangan talaga natin pag-asa eh. All right? Pero minsan, dahil ang pag-asa natin, very limited, ang pag-asa natin is, is um, ang source is a, is a wrong source. All right? And that's the reason why we, we cope out or, or we... Uh, we quit, we give up, all right? And all we want is to vanish into the thin air or uh, gone into this world. All right, so without God, ang, ang ano po natin, no? ang description ni Paul sa mga Gentiles. So makikita natin no, sa mga Jews, instead of attracting the Gentiles into God's kingdom, which is what God desires and God planned all along, they use their exalted position to look down on others. There are good Uh, uh, divisively. Okay? So ito pong word na uncircumcision, it is a divisive word. Dera, de, ano, derogatory. Okay to? Kung baga talagang ano. Diba? Mga, mga Israelites, those uncircumcised Philistines. Okay? It, it really brings uh, separation. No? What they are saying, they are not like us. We are insiders, they are outsiders. It was a point of pride for them. It was a point of pride for them. So, ito lang, no? may nasaga pa kong marites, no? Oh, tungkol sa mga Hudyo. Okay. Sa, so, sabi nila, some Jews believe, na kaya daw nag-create si God ng mga Gentiles, ay para, law, para daw la, maging hotter ang hell. Okay? Para daw laging, lalong uminit ang, ang, ano, ang impyerno. Okay? So, panggatong lang ang peg natin. <laughs> All right. Pero ito po yung reality. Ang mga Hudyo, pag nakakita po yan, lumalakad yan along the street, and they will see a Gentile coming the same direction, they will veer off. Hindi po yan sasalubong. Magbabago po yan ng course. Eh, parang pakiramdam ng mga taong may utang, tapos kasalubong yan yung pinagkautangan niya. Diba? Ganun-ganun yung pakiramdam, no? Ganun yun. Right. So, ganun yung nangyayari. It was unlawful for uh, the Jewish people to really uh, associate with them or even help even the Gentile woman. Lalo na pag pregnant, pag tinutulungan nila ang Gentile woman. Okay? Kasi they will be guilty of helping bringing another Gentile into the world. Okay? So ganun, ganun ang ano, perspective nila. Alright? So ganun kadumi ang mga Gentile people. Now even a Jewish girl, pag nakapag nakapangasawa po ito ng isang hudyo on the day of their wedding on the day ay sorry sorry hentil pala a Jewish girl married a Gentile a Gentile boy on the day of their wedding the Jewish family will also commemorate or will do a funeral service on behalf of their daughter sabay ng kasal telling their daughter that they are she is already dead to the family All right. So, yun po yung picture. As I am uh, studying the culture of the Jewish people. All right. So, there's this prevalent spirit of ignoring, being disregarded, excluded, rejected, and being far off. Okay. So, you know, exclusion or being far off never feels good. Tama po ba? I would remember myself when I was in elementary. Ako yung binubuli, ako yung iyak ng iyak, ako laging mahina. Diba? Parang, I don't want that feeling. Ah, diba? Parang, ang feeling ko is, meron ba akong purpose? Meron ba akong future? Meron ba akong uh, significance in this world? All right. So, it's, it's really a frustrating and disappointing life. All right? I would try my best to do anything to to be the person so that I could fit pero at the end of the day is still a something that uh, is far off from the reality all right so hirap no hirap pag ignored ka hirap pag rejected ka hirap pag you know the feeling no uh, ayun naalala ko lang nung no? hindi na ma'am pinatawad ko na naman na yung kapatid ko close kami ng sister ko may sister hindi ko sayo na lagi ko ang ganda-ganda ng sister ko no all right pero yung sister ko na yan nung bata kami no nagbabakasyon ako sa sinabihan ako ampun ka lang o di ba sakit mo na oh sakit mo buti na lang pinagaling ni Lord yung puso ko ayan so pero yung sabihan ka ng ampun ka lang di ba anak ka sa labas anong ginagawa mo pag may anak ka sa labas 
Dapat papasukin mo, di ba? <laughs> Busa yung pinto, papasukin mo, di ba? O, pero diba, parang aray, di ba? Ang sakit, di ba? Parang, and it will make really an impact in your life. Yung tipo bang na ano, sa, alam ko, meron mero mga ganun sa atin, no, na uh, sa, baha, sa, sa labas, puring-puri ka ng, ng magulang mo, ng mga nagmamahal sa'yo, pero pagdating sa loob ng bahay, nandoon away, nandoon gulo, nandoon puro accusation, nandoon puro, puro uh, guilt tripping. Okay? So, uh, we know that. We know the feeling of rejection, we know the feeling of being excluded, we know the feeling of far off. Pero yung feeling naman na pagka na-select ka, naman na-chose ka, diba? ikaw yung contestant natin para lumaban sa competition na to. Diba? Ikaw yung pang-beauty pageant natin. Pinili kita bilang Mr. Ama. Wow! Diba? Yung pala, bibigyan ako na maraming ticket para benta ko. Kung ako yung makadami ng benta, ako pala yung mananalo. No? So kailangan ko para i-prove yung sarili ko. No? <laughs> Right. Pero iba yung feeling pag napili ka, eh, di ba? Iba yung feeling pag nanalo ka, eh, no? Pag nanalo yung Golden State Warriors, di ba? Iba yung feeling, di ba? <laughs> All right. It feels good. You know what? This world has rejected us. This world has made us far away from what is important in our lives. And you know what? The Bible says, Paul said, But now in Christ Jesus, You who once were far off, you who once were far away, had been brought near by the blood of Christ. Have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Paul said you were an outsider. Paul said you were rejected. You were treated indifferent. But now you are an insider. But now you are accepted. But now you are brought near. Because of Christ in you. No matter how the world treated you, this is how God treated you. You are accepted. You are accepted. You are no longer rejected. You are accepted. If you are rejected by a loved one, alam ko rito, maraming iniiwan ng asawa, no? Let me tell you, God receives you. God receives you. Sakit kaya maiwan, no? ng minamahal sa buhay. Di ba? Maiwan ka lang nga ng isang ano eh. Huwag na nga. <laughs> Lalo pa kaya yung talagang minahal mo. Di ba? Lalo pa talaga yung nakasama mo. Di ba? Sa bagay, nakasama ko rin naman. Hindi. Di ba? Wala po ako hugot. Nagkapatawa lang po ako. If you are disregarded by your friends or by your peers, so what? So what? You are accepted in heaven. You are accepted by God. If you were not chosen in school, if the, if the school denied you for entrance, if you were demoted for work, if you were excluded in your business group, or if your business proposal was denied, rejected, let me tell you, anyone who put their place in God will never be rejected. They will always be accepted. We always, we all want to feel accepted. Ngalam problema po kasi sa atin. We try to find ourselves on a wrong identity or a wrong place or wrong people, di ba? Nung mga panahon namin ni Junel, di ba? Di ba? Mga hip hop, di ba? So hip hop ang cool, di ba? So kahit hindi ka hip hop, oh yes yes yo, di ba? Nakikijoin ka hindi naman eh, hindi bagay, di ba? Di ba? Yung mga na rock and roll, di ba? Headbangers, di ba? Diba? Nag-headbang ka, kalbo ka naman. Diba? So you try to be in, but you're not in. Alright? You try to find a different place, a place wherein you get fit. But there's one thing that you would want to understand here. Our life doesn't belong to this world. Our life doesn't belong to this world. And if we try to fit our lives on this world, it will never, never accept us. There's only one person, one God, who will receive us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who has been our bridge to God the Father, so that His death and His resurrection on the cross paved the way for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, so that we will understand, no matter how many rejections I have experienced or encountered in this life, there's a God who receives me. There's a God who accepts me. 
we will always be accepted no matter what happens in our life. Amen? Palakpan naman po natin ang ating Panginoon. Pangalawa, we were separated. Now we are reconciled. Ayan. Pinagbati na raw po tayo. Dati may separation. There's that great separation. Now we are reconciled. For He Himself is our peace who has made us both one. Both one. The Jews and the Gentiles, they are already one. The two has become one. Has broken down in His flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that He might create in Himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace. And might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. You know, Judaism is all about separation. I study Judaism, it's all about separation. In Judaism, there will be walls, fences, courtyard, and rooms. Okay? Kung pupunta ka po sa synagogue nila, okay, yung synagogue po nila, you will not be sitting the way you are seated right now. Okay? There, in, in their synagogues, there, there is a section for the women and there is a section for the men. Alright? Hindi mo pwedeng makatabi yung asawa mo or yung kapatid mong babae. All right, because there's that section for the men and there's section for the women. They are separated by gender. There was also a special room. A special room for the proselytes or the converts to Judaism. So pag ikaw ay foreigner or alien or hindi ka hudyo, all right, and you are interested, you would want to be identified with Judaism, then you become a proselyte, you are a convert to Judaism, and then you'll go to that special room. Pero hindi ka pa rin makikimingle sa mga Jews. All right. So, itong wall of hostility na binabanggit ni Paul, this is more than a metaphor. It is a real wall. It is a real wall. So if you will understand the temple, the temple is the place where the people of God worship, okay? There is this court called court of the priest, the priestly court, wherein only Jewish priests can come in. No Jewish man can allowed to enter, only Jewish priests. All right? And going further that, okay, after the court of uh, the priest, okay, nasaan ba yun? Ito, and the altar. Then you go further, you, you have the court of Israel. Okay, wherein this court of Israel is where the men gather, congregate, have fellowship, and do their sacrifice and worship. Okay, so dyan sila, court of Israel. And then we have the women's court. Going further outside the court of Israel is the court of the women. Okay, wherein the women gathered, congregate, fellowship, and do their service. Alright, and after the women's court, going further, lakad ka, tapos baba ka ng konti, descend a few steps. Okay, after a few steps, there's this four and a half feet tall wall. My wall, no? And this is the wall of hostility. Okay, wherein uh, after that wall is the courtyard of the Gentiles. Alright? And why it was called, the, called walls of hostility? Why? Because on that wall, there are these signs. My sign. Okay? At pag nakita mo po itong sign na ito, hindi ka mapapakanta ng I saw the sign. Alright? Because this is more than the keep out sign or beware of dog sign. Right? It is the, what they call the death sign. Okay? It's the death sign. Uh, two of these were preserved in the museum in Turkey and also in Jerusalem. Okay? I, I got this information from Wikipedia. All right, and according to the sign, this is how they read it. All right, ito po yung translation ng sign. No stranger is to enter within the balustrade round the temple and enclosure. Whoever is caught will be himself responsible for, him, for his ensuing death. Now imagine you are a Gentile walking on this wall and you see this sign. Wow, this church is very welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> so brother, huh? all right. This church is very welcoming, and even Paul in experience had their own taste of this. On Acts chapter twenty-one, he was accused of bringing Trophimus, an Ephesian, a Greek, all right, into the temple, and the people were outraged. They drug him, they beat him, and they would want to kill him. All right, si Paul na yon, huh? All right, and that's the reason why on the next chapter, he was defending himself, he was preaching the gospel, and all the more, the people were outraged. 
You see what happened after the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ? Paul said, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances. Okay, these were all man-made commandments. These were all man-made rules. Sabi ni, ina-acknowledge si Paul yan. Ina-acknowledge natin si God sa mga man-made rules natin, but tinanggal natin si God sa mga rules natin. That he might create in himself one new man in, in place of the two, so making peace, so that he might reconcile us both to God. So in other words, after the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, when Jesus shown himself to the disciples, after this animosity, there will no longer be no more Gentiles, no more Jews, only saved people. Only save people. In the perspective of Jesus, no matter what your background is, no matter what your color is, no matter what your education is, no matter what your status is, no matter what region you are, no matter you are, you are vaccinated or unvaccinated, if you have Christ, you are welcome to His church. You are welcome to His church. Let no wall of hostility stand between His people and God. As Jesus has broken down the walls of hostility, God also calls each one of us to break walls of hostility in our lives. You see, we have created walls of hostility as well. Probably in your family. Uh, some parents are uh, too much expectant of their children's per- performance, that their children are being valued because of what they do and not because of who they are. The children are angered because of their parents' behavior or values on them, that they see this. Uh, favoritism, they, they see this, uh, that there's partiality. Dito sa church, minsan, di ba, meron tayong walls of hostility, puti ka, may team ako, dyan ka lang, dito ako. Minsan, di ba, pag titignan mo yung tao, hindi ko gusto tabas ang ilong nito. Ha? Ha? Hindi ko gusto yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang countenance. Okay? Diba? So the way we see people, we prejudge them. Even the way they talk, we prejudge them. We create this wall of hostility. Minsan naman, we create walls of fear sa buhay natin. Or we create a wall of self-interest. Kung ano lang gusto ko, yun lang magagawa. You see, God demolished all walls that separates us. Kaya nga yung, yung curtain was torn into two. Why? Because everyone can enter into the temple. I hope we will also be committed to tearing down the walls that keep us apart today. What is dividing us from brethren to brethren, from brothers to brothers, from sisters to sisters, from parents to children, from boss to slaves? What is dividing us? Let us understand that we are no longer separated, but we are reconciled. Therefore, we are no longer foreigners. Now we are family. Since then, since, so then you are no longer strangers. Hindi na po tayo strangers, hindi na po tayo aliens. Sino mo yung katabi mo? Mukha bang alien yan? Alright? Hindi na po tayo alien. Alam mo yung stranger? Alam mo yung foreigner? A foreigner is a citizen who goes into another country. Tama? Alright? And when you go to another country, tiba parang you, you are restricted of privileges and benefits. Alright? Titingnan nila yung passport mo, you will be checked, you will be questioned in the, in, in the immigration. Diba? And then when you go into their, uh, into their land, as if parang naka-surveillance ka, naka-check. Diba? That's, though, uh, ito, uh, this is what we felt when we went to Israel. Okay? Though we had the favor, no visa tayo sa Israel. Ha? All right? Blessing ni God because of what uh, President Manuel Quezon did. Okay? By housing several Jewish people during that time when they are being persecuted. Uh, wala tayong visa pero nung pagpunta namin doon no, parang 
we were checked, we were questioned, and while we are on the bus going to our hostel, we, we noticed that there was a mobile that was coming to us. All right? And they said, oh, wow, diba, parang, we felt, we, well, we, we felt ano, honored because there was a mobile that was Alright? Pero nung tinanong namin, talaga bang ano, may mga sumuha? Uh, tapos nung sinabi ng host namin, they were just checking out if you will just go, if you will go directly to your destination. Wow, di ba? Parang talagang ano, no? So, alam mo, it brought, uh, it, it's frightening, it's scary. Tama po ba? Alright? Lalo na pag hindi mo alam yung, uh, na, yung culture, hindi mo alam yung ano. That's what foreigners felt, okay? Uh, in a land that, uh, that they don't belong. All right, they, ubaga, may, may hostility, meron. But you know what? Kay Lord, di ba? Wala tayong dapat ikatakot. Kay Lord, knowing that we are in the Lord, knowing that we are in His family, okay, we do understand that all benefits, all the blessings that He has prepared for His children, we can be confident and we can be secured. Tama? Pag pumunta ka sa bahay, kunyari, sa bahay namin, no? Sa bahay namin, yung mga anak ko, hindi yung kakatok sa kwarto namin magtatanong pa, Dad, can we eat the ice cream on the ref? Hindi na magtatanong yan. Bababa na lang ako, makikita ko, ubusay ice cream. <laughs> di ba? Yes. Because that's the blessing of a family. Alright? Pero kung kayo, pupunta sa bahay namin, tapos bubuksan nyo yung ref namin, kakain kayo ng ice cream, eh, mahiya naman kayo. <laughs> di ba? Understand what I'm saying? Alright? Pag kami, may mga bisita, yung mga victory group, yung mga victory group leaders po natin, when we uh, house them, when we, we ano, uh, have some fellowship, uh, I'm just glad, I'm just grateful. No, yes, we prepare something for them, pero everyone was going around, di ba? Meron naghuhugas, meron nag-aayos, meron ano, kwento. Why? Because we're family. We're family. Wala na, no, ano, okay ba? Ano, no, wala nang ganun-ganun pa. Why? Because we know if we are part of a family, we get ourselves involved. At alam naman natin, may mga tensions sa family, tama po ba? May mga conflicts, may mga nag-aaway sa family. Tama? May mga, may mga lumalayas nga eh. Pakita sa mga lumaya, huwag niyo taas. May mga lumalayas nga eh, di ba? Pero alam mo, pag family yan, babalik yan. Babalik yan at makipag-ayos, makipagsundo. Tama ba? We are a family. We are a family. Pag may conflict tayo, pag may offenses tayo, we settle. At inaayos natin on the basis of the relationship that we have with God. Si John Newton, kilala niyo po ba si John Newton? Okay, from history, he was a racist. Racist. He discriminates. By his own admission, ah, he was driven by prejudice so much that he sold West Africans in the human slave trade over a century ago. When he read the book, The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis, he was convicted. Long story short, he got born again. He gave his life to Christ, totally transformed, stopped what he was doing, joined the church, he became a clergyman, he became a pastor, wanting to contribute to the family of God by writing songs for the church. He wrote over 300 hymns, and one of them, is the singular song known worldwide, Amazing Grace. The song that we have sung earlier. I was blind, but now I see. I was wretched. I was a racist. I was a prejudiced wretch. And God saved me. God saved me. And you know what? On his deathbed, he said, My memory is nearly gone, but I only remember two things, that I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great Savior. I am a great sinner and Christ is a great Savior. Palagpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. I hope whatever is happening in our lives, whether we progress, we got promoted, we get successful in this life, we, we get to the top, I hope we still understand that we need a Savior. We need a Savior. And this Savior will continually bring us into a place wherein we will understand 
we are accepted. We are reconciled. And we have a family of God that will continually help us grow in our relationship with Him. As a church, we have given this privilege of working with this unity, with this family for the many years already. 34? How many years? Uh, since 1984? Uh, sino magaling sa music? Ayan, basta more than 30 plus sa tayo. <laughs> 1984, 2022, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. You know what? 20, 2010, 2010, we got the record from Guinness World Record of singing Amazing Grace with 49 languages. Ginawa po yan sa Mawa. I was there, we witnessed it. It was so amazing. It was a heaven experience here on earth with many Nations coming together to worship God as one. Mga kapatid, yeah? this is the blessing of God for us. Meron nga doon, kahit hindi mo maintindihan yung kinakanta eh. Mapapa-worship ka na lang talaga eh. Kasi alam mo, the anointing of God was on everyone. And I believe that as we continually walk together as a church, we will continually see the anointing of God blessing our family, blessing our workplace, blessing our studies, blessing everything we will do, even our ministries, because we have the very heart of God. We have the very heart of God. Because we do understand that no matter how the world will reject us, we are accepted. No matter how the enemy will try to destroy our relationship with God, we are reconciled to Him. And that as we walk in this life, we are not left alone. We have the family of God. We have the church of God that will help us be a better person, not just be a better person, but a person who will bring glory and honor to our God. Amen? Amen. Palakpakan naman po natin ng ating Panginoon. Let's put this into practical application. Ayan. Mga kapatid, I believe does Christ release His grace to each one of us to understand that we are accepted? You know, this church is not just about welcoming people, but this church is about discipling people. Know the presence of God more by being a part of a victory group, by being a part of a discipleship group, because this is the heart of God for each one of us. Not just to sit here on, on Sunday, but meeting people week after week, praying for one another, encouraging one another, believing with one another, so that Christ will be exalted in each one of us. God's heart for us. So if you are that person na hindi ka pa connected sa victory group, or you do understand that hindi ka pa connected sa one-to-one, meron tayo rito one-to-one form on your chair. All right, we're in. Please do sign up and let's allow, allow us, allow us to help you walk with Jesus. Allow us. Wala pa ako nakita na nag-undergo ng one-to-one na nagsabing, hindi ko kailangan yan. Every person that I walk with on one-to-one and hearing those victory group leaders who are doing one-to-one, they were excited of growing and walking with the Lord. I hope that as we are starting this church again, you who are here, don't just come here Sunday after Sunday. Don't just be seated. Be discipled. Walk as a disciple and also in the coming days, make disciples as well. Make disciples as well. Sino mga victory group leaders dito? Pakitas ang kamay. If you are not part of a victory group, you can approach these people. These people will help you grow in the Lord. These people will help you. They have the heart to accept, to welcome you. These people have weakness as well. These people have limitations as well. But we have the heart to help you find your purpose in God, grow in your relationship with God, and fulfill God's plan and purpose in your life. Amen? Can I ask everyone to please stand up?
All heads bowed and eyes closed. Lord, thank you. Thank you for dying for us and being resurrected so that your promises for us will be fulfilled and will be accomplished. Lord, this in us, your church, Lord God, we embrace your plans and purpose for us. Let us not be hearers of the words, but also be doers of the word. Lord, if, any, if there's anyone here, Lord God, who doesn't have a relationship with you, Lord, hindi, ka, hindi pa kayo tinatanggap bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas ng kanilang buhay, Lord God, let me just challenge them right now. This is your opportune time. Don't wait for tomorrow or don't wait for another Sunday to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Receive Him right now. He's here. He would want to come into your heart, into your life, so that He will bless you. He will make you the better person. He will make you the person that He would want you to be. And if that is you, pray with me. Lord, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I confess that I have turned away from you, from your will. And right now, I ask for your forgiveness. I repent of my sins. I turn away from anything that is offensive to you. And right now, I receive you as my personal Savior and Lord. I receive your forgiveness. And I know that you have forgiven me. I know that you are, you are welcoming me. And I know that you are embracing me right now as your son or as your daughter. Right now, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus, to love Jesus, to be with Jesus. Not just for today, but for the rest of my life. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. To all of us, can we raise our hands before our God? Lord, kung meron mga mga rejected dito, bypass, Lord God, ignored. Lord God, feeling indifferent. Lord, thank you that you are bringing us back to your presence. You will not reject us. You will not, Lord God, make us feel indifferent. Lord God, your love is always there. You are always faithful to us. It's just our unfaithfulness, Lord God, that leads us away from you. But right now, we go back to you. Lord, if there's anything, Lord God, in our hearts that's trying to, Lord God, destroy our relationship with you if there's anything lord if there's sin lord god if there's any lies of the enemy if there's anything lord god that tries to build a wall between us lord god we say lord destroy it destroy it destroy it lord god so that lord not uh, not only our relationship with you would be restored but our relationship with one another lord god with our family with our loved ones lord god with our friends with our church mates lord god with our office mates with our lord kung sino man mga naka nakaaway namin meron kami mga grievances meron kami mga conflicts lord god meron kami mga uh, hinanakit lord god thank you that you are removing the weights lord god in our hearts the burden those false burdens lord god so that we can continually walk with you so that we can continually fulfill your purpose so that we can continually represent you Lord, come, have your way. Remove in us, Lord God, all the bitterness, all the hatred, all the anger, all the unforgiveness, even offenses, Lord God. And you are telling your people, Lord God, it is for our own glory that we overlook an offense. Lord, you would want us to be reconciled as we are reconciled to you. Lord God, you would want us, Lord God, to experience a family, Lord God. Yes, there are tensions, issues, and conflicts, but there will be reconciliation. There will be acceptance. There will be love, unconditional love, sacrificial love, selfless love, the kind of love that you have displayed over our lives. Thank you. Thank you for touching each one of us. Lord, I speak your blessings to your people. I declare good health. I declare rest. I declare fruitfulness over the week. Lord God, I declare healthy Relationships, Lord God, I declare, Lord God, that you will protect them wherever they go. Let them not, Lord God, uh, go to fit in this world, but let them continually, Lord God, focus on the kingdom that you are building in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. We just want to honor you today in Jesus' name. And everyone will say, Amen and Amen. Can we give God praise? Before we go out, as another way of improving our church, I want us to take 
please uh, take your cell phone. Uh, di ba? Paki, pakilabas po ang inyong mga cell phone. Alright? Pakilabas po ang inyong mga cell phone. And please take a picture of this code. Okay? This code will bring you to a form, a Google form, wherein it will be a survey, a church survey, wherein we want you to, to answer so that we'll continually understand where we are as a church and how we can continually improve and how we can continually help everyone who attends this church. All right, so please do, do answer this form. Okay, just take a picture. Kung wala naman po kayong camera, meron po tayong ano, uh, printed din. Uh, you can uh, get it from our ushers as you go out. Okay, so that we will know. You'll be able to help us okay, to continually improve what we are doing in our church. All right, so, all right, so please take a picture of the code or... If you don't have a, pic, a camera or uh, a cell phone, just get a copy of this printed survey. So again, thank you everyone. God bless you as you continually honor God and make disciples in your life. Every year as a church, we pray and fast at the start of the year and mid-year because we want to know God more, go deeper in the Word, and be in faith for what He will do in and through us. When we fast, we declare that we want God more than food by denying ourselves for a time. Remember, pray about the kind of fast you will undertake and commit to it ahead of time. Do not decide on a day-to-day -day basis. Ask God for grace. Together, let's know God more and hear from Him during our prayer and fasting.